Welcome to the Critical Reading Strategies Interactive Video Lesson. This video is one of two designed to give you a better understanding of how to critically engage with a variety of texts. This lesson is a little more robust and contains a lot of content. Feel free to pause it at any time. You can also download the PowerPoint used in the video by accessing it in our Course PowerPoints module in Canvas. Because this is an interactive video lesson, you will be asked to pause the video at various points to engage with the text using the strategies discussed in the video. As such, you will need to first pause in order to collect the following resources and have them at your disposal as we walk through this activity together. You will need the Critical Reading Strategies resource sheet found in Canvas, a text from our course of your choosing, a highlighter, pen, pencil, and of course, a blank piece of paper for notes. Now go ahead and pause the video, get what you need, and come right back. Now that you have what you need, I want you to begin by taking out the text that you chose to read. Set a clock to five minutes. When I say go, pause the video and read your text for five minutes. That's all you have to do is read. You won't get through the entire text and that is okay. When the five minutes are up, return to the video. Ready, set, go. Your five minutes is up, and it is now time to reflect on your reading process. We all have one, and in order to best affect our own process, we need to reflect on its strengths as well as areas for development. On your blank piece of paper, jot down some thoughts based on the following questions. Please feel free to pause the video in between questions to give you a chance to reflect. Now think back on your reading process. What was the first thing you did when asked to read the text? Did you begin reading from the top? Did you look at the length of the text? Write down a few thoughts regarding how you started your reading process. Next, what were some things you did as you read the text? For example, did you read nonstop? Did you pause to take some notes or circle an unknown word? And finally, what were some challenges you encountered as you read? Remember, our reflection should give us an idea of the strengths as well as the areas for development. Keep this reflection handy as we talk through the rest of the lesson. Now that we have a brief understanding of how we initially approach a text, let's think about some critical reading strategies that can provide us with tools to attack a variety of texts. Before we begin, have you ever been assigned or have been reading a text only to find it difficult to understand and connect with? Have you ever been reading a text only to look up and realize that you have been reading the words but really have no idea what the point is and could not truly summarize, analyze, or discuss its content? This happens to all of us at some point in our reading, and the strategies we are about to discuss are designed to perhaps help affect those challenges. While we go through each of these strategies briefly, please use the Critical Reading Strategies resource sheet as a guide. While we cover many of the strategies, it is not meant for you to engage with each of them in your reading process at the same time. Think about how you reflected on your process, and as we walk through these strategies, make a note as to which ones you might want to engage with first. As we begin discussing your reading process, it is important to understand that reading is an active process. Remember when I asked if you had ever been reading a text only to realize that you read the words but could not connect to the information or even extract meaning from it to discuss? Many times that is because we are not actively reading the text. We are able to word call or read each word because we are very proficient readers of words and decode them with automaticity. However, reading to comprehend requires attention to the, how the words are communicating. This means that we are actively engaged with what is being read. When we actively read, we intentionally apply critical reading strategies to do things like analyze or summarize the text, video, image, web page, or audio. We engage with the active reading process in order to do things like capture the main ideas, key concepts, and details of reading, mine the information from the text in order to analyze or summarize it. We engage with the text by making connections with our own knowledge and lives, and we ask questions that help us think deeper about the content. 
So, how do we do this? As we move into the specific strategies, go ahead and locate your Critical Reading Strategies resource sheet to use for reference and notes as we talk about them. Remember to keep in mind how you reflected on your own process. When we talk about reading critically, we mean it as a process that goes beyond just understanding the text. It goes well beyond a skim and involves careful consideration and evaluation of the text so that you can then discuss not only what the text says, but also how the text can be analyzed and interpreted. So we will think about the strategies in the following ways. Previewing, contextualizing, questioning to understand and remember, connecting to the text, reflecting on the challenges to your beliefs and values, in other words, examining your personal responses, outlining and summarizing, evaluating an argument, and then comparing and contrasting it to related readings. Again, remember, you are not trying to apply all of these at once, and many of these you are already doing. The purpose of this discussion is to reflect on what you are already doing and then think about how we could strengthen our reading process to attack and consume various information. Please note, as you will see, we can apply these strategies across a variety of modes as well. It is not constrained to just reading text. It also extends to information given in modes such as static images and video. The first strategy we're going to talk about is called previewing, or learning about a text before really reading it. Previewing enables readers to get a sense of what the text is about and how it is organized before reading it closely. This simple strategy includes seeing what you can learn from the head notes or other introductory material, skimming to get an overview of the content and organization, and identifying the rhetorical situation. It also enables you to think about possible connections to the text or any prior knowledge you may have regarding the content. Our next strategy is contextualizing, or placing a text in its historical, biographical, and cultural context. When you read a text, you read it through the lens of your own experience. Your understanding of the words on the page and their significance is informed by what you have come to know and value from living in a particular time and place. But the texts you read were all written in the past, sometimes in a radically different time and place. To read critically, you need to contextualize to recognize the differences between your contemporary values and attitude and those represented in the text. Our next one is questioning to understand and remember, or asking questions about the content. Asking questions while you read is another reading skill that is important to becoming an effective reader. Active readers are constantly asking questions without realizing it. The how and why questions will help you focus on what is important in the text. While focusing on those questions, the reader is engaged in the events of the text. Another critical reading strategy is connecting to the text. To better understand the points the author is making, we typically see connections in three ways. Text to self, meaning you have a personal experience with the points that the author is making. Text to text, meaning you've read something or seen something that reminds you of the points the author is making. And then text to world. This means that you've encountered something in the news or observed it in those around you that connect you to the points that the author is trying to make. Reflecting on challenges to your beliefs and values or examining your personal responses. The reading that you do for this class might challenge your attitudes, your unconsciously held beliefs, or your positions on current issues. As you read a text for the first time, mark an X in the margin at each point where you feel a personal challenge to your attitudes, beliefs, or status. Make a brief note in the margin about what you feel or about what in the text created the challenge. Now look at it again at the places you marked in the text where you felt personally challenged. What patterns do you see? Our next strategy is outlining and summarizing. Identifying the main ideas and restating them in your own words. Outlining and summarizing are especially helpful strategies for understanding the content and structure of a reading selection. Whereas outlining reveals the basic structure of the text, summarizing synopsizes a selection's main argument in brief. Outlining may be part of the annotating process 
or it may be done separately. The key to both outlining and summarizing is being able to distinguish between the main ideas and the supporting ideas and examples. The main ideas form the backbone, the strand that holds the various parts and pieces of the text together. Outlining the main ideas helps you discover their structure. When you make an outline, don't use the text exact words. Summarizing begins with outlining, but instead of merely listing the main ideas, a summary recomposes them to form a new text. Whereas outlining depends on a close analysis of each paragraph, summarizing also requires creative synthesis. Putting ideas together again, in your own words, and in a condensed form. This shows how reading critically can lead to a deeper understanding of any text. Evaluating an argument or assertion, or testing the logic of a text, as well as its credibility and emotional impact. All writers make assertions that they want you to accept as true. As a critical reader, you should not accept anything on face value, but recognize that every assertion has an argument that must be carefully evaluated. An argument has two essential parts, a claim and support. The claim asserts a conclusion, or an idea, something that the writer wants you to accept. The support includes reasons. These could be shared beliefs, as well as evidence, which are facts, examples, statistics. This is the basis for accepting the conclusion. When you assess an argument, you are concerned with the process of reasoning as well as its truthfulness. These are not the same thing. At the most basic level, in order for an argument to be acceptable, the support must be appropriate to the claim. Finally, comparing and contrasting related texts. This means we put it into conversation with other texts and we explore likenesses and differences between the text to understand them better. Many of the authors we read are concerned with the same issues or questions, but approach how to discuss them in different ways. Fitting a text into an ongoing dialectic helps increase understanding of why an author approached a particular issue or question in the way that he or she did. All right, you made it through the reading strategies. Now let's do a couple of activities that pull it all together for us. In the first activity, you're going to be digitally creating an infographic of your ideal reading process. Based on our discussion and the Critical Reading Strategies resource sheet, develop a visual map of your ideal reading process. Use both the strategies on the sheet as well as our discussion in this video. What does your process look like? Let your creativity shine as you connect the strategies in your reading roadmap. You're going to do this in five easy steps. First, sign up with Canva. This is an online, open access, templated digital tool where you're able to then develop an infographic. So search templates for infographics. Choose the template you like, build your infographic. Once you've completed it, submit it to Canvas Assignments. The next is a reflection, and as you plan to compose that reflection, I want you to think about a couple of things. Based on our discussion and activities in class, do you feel you are a more active or passive reader? Discuss which active reading strategies you are already incorporate into your reading process. Discuss which active reading strategies you would like to focus on throughout the semester so they become a part of your reading process. What challenges do you encounter when you read? How might you begin to overcome these challenges? Once you're ready, go ahead and go into Canvas and complete the reflection assignment. Want to know more? Head over to the next video in the series specifically focused on annotation strategies that will help solidify the critical reading strategies from this video.